All right, folks, welcome to Linderman Unleashed. I'm your host, Kurt Linderman Sr., bringing you the bare-knuckled right hook of truth to any that would try to put the chokehold on your liberty. Dr. Russell Blaylock is on today. Doc Blaylock, how you doing, man? Doing very good. Appreciate the invitation. And I really want my listeners to hear your take on this. The main reason I got you on the program was your recent article about the nano-aluminum particles in the uh, chemtrails. I think it's just a so important that people understand what's going on here. Then I uh, found some articles about the chemtrails and there was a lot being said about it and I, I wasn't too sure whether it was true or not because in my state we, we rarely saw them. But as I started looking on the internet and I would see these, these states in which there were these crisscross patterns and they were very tight patterns and these geometrical shapes where it was obvious they were, uh, it was a purposeful uh, covering of the atmosphere with with these patterns uh, and the trails were so long well now you know we're starting to see them in my state and as i look at them they go from horizon to horizon well you know i've been alive long enough to know that jets never did that in the past and i see the same pattering effect now where they're crisscrossing there it's, it's an obvious uh, uh pattern and so i uh, looked into the literature and some of the reports and youtube videos and they were saying uh, that they were dropping uh, one of the ingredients was aluminum. Well, I had uh, done a fair amount of uh, writing and research uh, uh, on the effect of aerosolized uh, chemicals in the, in the nose when you breathe them. And uh, what we knew was that these particles tend to travel along the uh, olfactory nerves, which are the smell nerves in the nose, and it travels directly to the part of the brain that has to do with memory and, and uh, emotions, uh, the, the hippocampus, the entorhinal area, and the prefrontal cortex, and that you can trace these chemicals traveling along that nerve and depositing in this area of the brain. The other thing that was known is that if you aerosolize aluminum, uh, it's one of the metals that passes very easily along this track and directly into the brain, so it bypasses the blood-brain barrier and goes directly into the brain and accumulates. Well, if you do it in animals, it produces lesions or damage in that uh, area of the brain, and the animal uh, will begin to show changes of memory and learning and emotional changes. When we look at people who have Alzheimer's disease, ironically, the highest concentration of aluminum in the brain is uh, that same entry point, uh, what's called the entorhinal cortex. Uh, and the levels uh, continue to accumulate. So we have compelling evidence that aerosolized aluminum alone will enter the brain and produce damage to that critical area of the brain. The worst of all is the nano size. Now, nano size means you make it such a small particle uh, that it easily penetrates skin, it penetrates barriers in the body that normally metals cannot pass through. Uh, when you nano-size them, produce these incredibly small particulate matter, it passes very easily. So when you nano-size aluminum and you uh, use it in uh, these aerosols through the nasal passages, uh, it enters the brain in very high concentrations. And they find that the nano-size aluminum in the brain is infinitely more toxic. Now, one of the toxic uh, reactions to aluminum is intense inflammation. Uh, an activation of cells in the brain that are the immune cells called microglia. Uh, aluminum is a very potent activator of these uh, immune cells, and that triggers the release of a powerful substance called glutamate, which is an excitotoxin that causes uh, cells to die from an excitatory mechanism, kind of complex mechanism, but it, it uh, is a combination of inflammation and excitotoxicity. And I coined the term in the medical literature <clears throat> called immunoexcitotoxicity to describe that process. So we know that occurs. We know it occurs very easily. Now, the reports are coming out now that what they're spraying is nano-size aluminum, and the idea is a uh, concept of preventing global warming. And they nano-size the aluminum so it'll stay in the upper atmosphere longer, supposedly as a reflective compound, uh, a metal. The problem with that, even from a climatologic description, is that if you make it into cirrus like clouds rather than reflecting it upward and out of the atmosphere, it reflects the heat downward and actually causes global warming. You know, you 
could envision that they're doing this on purpose to make the atmosphere heat up so they can see, see the atmosphere is warming up. But what I'm concerned about mainly is the medical effect, and that's because of this very strong connection between aluminum passing through this pathway into the brain is so strongly connected with Alzheimer's disease uh, and other diseases of memory. Uh, if you're aerosolizing this and spraying literally tons of it over the world uh, and people are constantly breathing that uh, aerosolized nano-sized aluminum, which will easily penetrate filters in your uh, air condition system, enter your home. So you're breathing it 24 hours a day, producing high levels of aluminum uh, in this part of the brain, and uh, the consequences could be absolutely devastating. It could cause a huge increase in uh, Alzheimer's disease and uh, inflammatory neurological disorders. I watched a YouTube, which was a geoengineering conference that the government had uh, put on. And in the conference, uh, one of the questions somebody in the audience asked, well, what is the medical effect of spraying aluminum in the atmosphere? And the speaker said, well, uh, we don't really know. Uh, but we're in the process of researching that. Well, of course, that was an absolute lie. We do know what it does. Right. But uh, the fact that they were admitting that, in uh, fact, they were going to spray, they gave it in the, in the future tense, that they were going to spray aluminum. Uh, the evidence now from um, the uh, examination by biologists and, and scientists around the world is that the aluminum level in the lakes and streams and trees and uh, is increasing enormously. Uh, some areas have uh, incredible elevations of aluminum in the, in the groundwater uh, and in the, the vegetation. So uh, if this indeed is happening, uh, we're looking at a, a medical catastrophe uh, that's worldwide. To already implement this program and have it going out, literally, I mean, I live in Missouri, and I can tell you, it, on any given day, it's chemtrail after chemtrail after chemtrail. Just, it's ridiculous. It covers the entire sky on certain days. And not knowing what the health impacts are, that's criminal. Well, it is, and, I, and I've been on several programs, and that's what I, my statement was, that it's criminal, and whoever's doing this should uh, be um, charged with the criminal uh, act. Uh, this could kill thousands, if not millions of people eventually. I mean, if you, you're inducing... Alzheimer's uh, disease on a worldwide scale, and you're inducing a number of diseases just from breathing it. I mean, within the lungs, you can produce asthma, you can produce chronic lung disease. People who have pre existing chronic lung disease will precipitously get worse because aluminum, as it enters the, the epithelium of the lungs, uh, is going to produce intense inflammatory reactions, and that's going to produce a worsening of their pulmonary conditions. Also, the, the uh, aluminum is absorbed into the bloodstream, uh, can be deposited in the heart. People with heart failure would get worse. Uh, people with hypertension would get worse. Uh, numerous diseases could be uh, precipitated and worsened uh, by such uh, an insane policy. But it is criminal. It's a criminal act. Yeah, no doubt. No one was asked permission to do this. This was not announced publicly. This was not uh, entered into a public forum. Uh, so... <clears throat> these health uh, issues could be discussed. Uh, they just secretly uh, have done it on a worldwide uh, scale of, uh, of, of an enormous proportion, dropping uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of tons of this, uh, this product in the atmosphere. Exactly. The thing yeah. about it, it's irreversible. Once it enters the streams and the waters and the plants, uh, there's no way to remove it. You, you know, you've destroyed... Uh, massive amounts of uh, the environment. I want to talk about how uh, the deniers out there, the skeptics out there, are just uh, making themselves look completely ridiculous. Uh, Dr. Blaylock, uh, this stratospheric aerosol geoengineering is what uh, is what we're referring to when we're talking about these chemtrails. And, and I love how you talked about the fact that when you were younger, you knew what contrails looked like. They lasted about oh, maybe a couple of hundred or thousand feet, and then they slowly dissipated. And what we're seeing now is just a a structured blanketing of the the atmosphere. 
I'm looking at these skeptics and they're talking about, well, these studies that were done, samples that were taken, they were taken off of aluminum sided buildings and all this idiot crap that they're talking about. And it's like, what aluminum sided buildings are you talking about? Because what I'm seeing is they're taking it out of uh, one of the tributaries of Lake Shasta off the snow caps of the snow cap mountain of, of Mount Shasta. They're taking it out of the bark of trees that have died from aluminum toxicity. This is all, I mean, so blatantly real. I just can't believe that there are skeptics out there that can deny this. Well, the skeptics usually are people who are involved with government somehow, and, and that's their job. Their job is to debunk it. Uh, the problem is is that we have people who are trained uh, biologists who are taking water samples, like you say, from lakes and streams. Uh, we have biologists from all over the world that are sampling it from the leaves of trees and plants and the, the fauna uh, in Hawaii, uh, uh, in the Pacific Northwest, uh, in Arizona. So they're doing it all over. All of them are finding the same things. And, of course, we have records of, of uh, the levels of aluminum in the lakes and streams and vegetation that go back many, many decades. And so it's easy to compare. And when what we see is over the last uh, 10 years has been an astronomical increase in the aluminum, not just a minor variation, but an astronomical increase in the aluminum level. And, uh, you know, when you look at it uh, worldwide and you see the same thing, uh, the, the skeptics just sort of fade into the, to the world of nonsense. <laughs> no. uh, most of the time when I see skeptics that are uh, questioning what I say, others say, uh, their arguments are so patently ridiculous, uh, it, it, it wouldn't even make a good fairy tale. So they, they're very desperate and bending over backward trying to concoct some uh, nonsense uh, uh, explanation. And one of the, the, the defenses I gave, I, I would watch these chemtrails, my wife and I would watch them, and I said, I looked up and I said, notice that the jets uh, chemtrail now has stopped and there's a gap and then it started again and then it stopped and there's another gap well if it's a contrail that means a, a jet the size of a, 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 a B-17 is shutting its engines off and starting them back up <laughs> yeah. well the jets there. can't shut their engines off and turn them back on repeatedly <laughs> uh, so you know that alone proves it's nonsense they're not turning them on and turn them off within a short a distance, and then they get the explanation. Oh, it's the uh, coldness of the atmosphere. Well, you can see two jets flying at the same time. They're both large jets. Uh, one of them has a normal uh, contrail, very short, very small. And the other next to it is a huge trail, uh, and so they're flying at the same time, same atmosphere, same temperature, same elevation, and yet their their trails are different. Uh, and they're obviously different, tremendously different. <clears throat> and when these uh, chemtrails go over, uh, it produces huge clouds. Well, you don't see contrails that produce uh, persisting clouds. No, they immediately they begin to dissipate. After the jet is gone. Uh, you know, they're sheer nonsense. So, you know, their explanations are laughable nonsense. Yeah, I mean, contrails, by their very, by their very nature begin to dissipate as soon as they come out of the plane. And what we're seeing here is particles that are remaining intact and spreading. You know, it, it's just, at, it's patently ridiculous. Sure, and they, and they form clouds, you know. Yeah. Obviously, we've seen some days in which virtually every cloud in the sky is a chemtrail cloud. And they're there long after the jet's gone. I mean, hours after, they're, they're these huge smudges of clouding. Uh, well, that's not a contrail. Contrails don't last that long. And the other thing is suspicious is when they try to get the military to give them, uh, let them sample the fuel in these jets, they, they wouldn't let, it, let them do it directly. What they did is they sent them samples of jet fuel. Well, <laughs> you know, that's two different things. Yeah. I, I want to know what's in that jet fuel. I don't want to have you send me a sample. You go down to the, the, the pure tank and... Uh, you know, send a sample, uh, but you're not taking what's being uh, sprayed into the atmosphere. So there, obviously, there's a lot of secrecy. They don't 